This video will demonstrate how to create a hot reloading Java program with Docker. Here is a diagram to explain the live reloading. We will create an Ubuntu container in Docker with Java installed. Our Java program will run within this container. When we modify a file, the container will notice the change and automatically recompile. Now let's take a closer look at how recompiling works. When we modify a Java file, the running Java program becomes stale and needs to be recompiled. We will make use of Nodemon, a Node.js tool that watches for file changes. When any Java file changes, Nodemon will notice and recompile our Java program. Now let's set up our Ubuntu container and install Java. I opened a directory in VS Code, and my first file I'm going to create is called Dockerfile, and this is what's going to be used to create our Docker container. The first thing we're going to do is specify the image we want to use. I'm going to use Ubuntu 20. Next thing is our work directory. I'll just call it app. And important first step is we want to run apt get update. This is so all the dependencies and things we install are up to date. Next, I'm going to specify that our environment is not desktop, as well as the time zone. I copied and pasted this. A link to this Docker file will be in the video's description. After we've specified the non-desktop environment and the time zone, I'm going to copy and paste this make directory command. Above is a link to a Stack Overflow post explaining why we need to do this. Next, we're going to install Java as well as resolve any certificate issues related to the install. And that's right here. So this, this section up here installs OpenJDK 8. It also fixes uh, certificate issues that you run into sometimes when you install Java. Next, it's time to install Nodemon. I'll do this down here. We install Node.js and NPM. And then the next step is we install Nodemon globally. And then the last three steps are to copy our script that will start the Nodemon command to watch for files changed. You also have to specify executable permissions on this script. And then the container will start by running this app start sh command. So your Docker file should look something like this. Again, this is in the video's description, so don't feel like you need to copy this character by character. Okay, next step is we're going to create our start.sh file. And in here, we're going to run a single nodemon command. So it's nodemon-e java, which says we were looking for Java files in uh, what directory. All of our Java files will live in this src folder, which I'll create on the left side after this. And then the command that we want to run when a file is changed is java c dash this is short for class path. The class will live inside of app src. And then any binaries we create will live in bin. And the files that we want to compile are inside of app src, anything ending in .java, like so. And then after doing so, this command here is the compile command with java c. And then we're going to run Java, so Java dash short for class path, and then app bin my class will be the name of our main class. So there you go. This is our nodemon command. And whenever a file is changed, it runs what's here in the quotes. Now that we've made our Docker file and start script, let's create two directories, one for our binary and then one for our Java files, so bin and src. And then let's create a Docker compose file. And this will define the live reloading Java container. So at the top, I'll just do version two. This doesn't really matter what version you use. Uh, services, Java, we'll call it Java app. And for the build, we're gonna specify that the context is the current directory in. The Docker file is, that's in the same directory. And then now this is the important part of our volumes because we're going to share these directories over here with the directories in the Docker container. So first directory we're sharing is SRC and we're mounting that into app SRC. And then the next one we're sharing is bin like so. And in here in this SRC, I'm going to create a single Java file called my class. 
and we'll make something very simple. So, with that done, let's make sure our Docker Compose YAML is saved. Let's go ahead and run the live reloading container. So this is very simple, just docker compose up. And because it's our first time creating the container, running all these steps might take a little while. So I'll skip to the part where the container is starting to run. So we can see that it just ran and we got an output here, hello there, which matches what we wrote in the class. Now if I add an exclamation and hit save, we can see that it automatically recompiles and we can see the changes take effect. What's really cool about NodeMon is that you can also create new files in the SRC directory and NodeMon will notice this and reload. So I'll make another file called another.java and we'll have another console login here. So now if I go over to my class and I create an object using that class, we can see that it ran. Now what if we want to add jar files, .jar files into our project? Let's leverage Nodemon one more time so we can install jar files dynamically. So I'm going to make a new directory called jar and what we're going to do is in our start script I'm going to add another line here for another Nodemon command which will run before the Java command and what it will do is anytime a file gets copied into the jar directory it will copy it into the location in the Ubuntu container where we need to install jar files it's this copied and pasted command so same thing Nodemon it's looking for the jar extension type in the jar directory and when a change is detected it copies everything from jar into this directory located in Java 8 open JDK this is where we need jar files to exist for our program to use them I'll add an ampersand at the end of the command which means that it will run in the background and that will allow this command to be run right after it. With these two lines added to our start script, let's go ahead and modify our Docker Compose YAML to have one more entry in the volume section for jar. And we can add some temporary file here called keep. And the reason why we're doing this is because otherwise the, the copy command will get mad that there's nothing in this directory. So this is just some initial value that we get copied. So Let's rerun our container with docker compose up build. We can see that we still have our output here. Now let's test installing a jar file or adding a jar file to our program. So in our main class here, I'm going to try to import org.json, which is a common library used for parsing JSON and creating JSON objects. Now if we run this, it gets mad because the org.json package doesn't exist. But if I grab a jar file that has org.json, like so, and I drag it into the jar directory, by the way, this will be linked in the video's description. So if I copy this in here, and I go back to my class and I rerun the save command, we can see that the copy command already ran here. If I rerun it, we get no error. So now let's try to leverage the org.json library to make sure that everything works. So I'll just print out the contents of a JSON object. So system out print line. Let's print a new JSON object. Let's import JSON object instead. We'll put a string field called JSON. And then at the end, we'll do two string like so. Now, if I hit save, it won't work because I put a semicolon there, but if I get rid of it, you can see it works. There you have it. Live reloading Java containers made easy.